I want to thank you for joining me on this Tuesday in the season of Easter. I'm so grateful that you're here. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, what a blessing it is to gather here in the season of Easter and remember and hear about the good news of Jesus Christ and what it is he's done for us. For we give thanks in your precious name. Amen. So we're looking at Acts chapter 4 today, and the 5th through the 12th verse. And this is important because it's a follow-up to our last lesson. When, remember, Peter saw a crippled man who was begging and begging for money. And Peter said, hey, gold and silver I don't have, but I'll give you what I do have. And so in the name of Jesus, he invited him to, to, to be healed, to be raised up. And so the man who had been a cripple all of his life was now healed and able to get back to fruitful endeavors in his life. And people were just baffled. This didn't sit well with the religious leadership. You know, it's honestly the same old, same old, same old people that we saw back at the time when Jesus Christ was crucified. Which, by the way, wasn't that long ago. It might be 60 days from the time that Chris, Jesus was crucified. And then he rose again. And now here we are, 60 days later, the same exact bad players are at it again. They don't like the fact that a handful of disciples of Jesus are turning the world upside down with this message of Jesus Christ. They're like, good grief, what is going on? So shortly after this, actually that evening after the healing of that cripple, the, uh, the apostles, who are, by the way, what's an apostle? Apostle is... A disciple who had an experience with the resurrected Christ and now becomes a witness to this message that Christ is risen. That is what an apostle is, okay? So, these apostles were now thrown into jail. Well, they didn't know what to do with them in the night. They are going to convene the next morning and uh, basically bring them to trial. Now, if you're Peter, maybe you're a little bit frightened at this point. I don't know. You, know, you saw what happened to Jesus Christ. When he was brought through the same august group of people, he was crucified. So maybe all night long you're thinking, well, I guess now is my day of days, my time of time. Peter's finally going to have to live by his words. Remember on the night which Jesus was betrayed, Peter said, even if I have to die with you, I will follow you to the bitter end. Well, of course, Peter betrayed Jesus that night and ran away because of the accusation of a servant girl. He lacked courage to follow through with what he promised Jesus. And actually, that's kind of okay. It wasn't his time to die. But this might be, you have to think, this may be what, what Peter's thinking at this time. So the next day, he's thrown in jail. The next day, the elders, the rulers, the scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, recognize that name, Caiaphas, remember that name, and John and Alexander, all who were of the high priestly family. So these are the big guns, okay? They're brought in. You're Peter again. You're standing in front of the same people that put Jesus to death. Now, when they made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power? Or by what name do you do this? Power. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, the word... Power comes from the word dunamis. Uh, we get the word dynamite out of that. You might recognize that. Now, they didn't have dynamite at that time. They weren't thinking of explosion. That's a new concept put into this world, this concept of explosion. But the point is that there's power here. What power do you use? Now, back in the time of Jesus, when they're accusing Jesus uh, because of his healing of people, they said, well, he must have the devil in him, Beelzebul. And uh, so you can see they're kind of setting uh, Peter up for the same type of accusation. So by what, by what power do you do this? What name do you do this? They dare, they're daring him to name the name of Jesus at this point. So Peter, okay, remember how I said to you, Peter, on the night which Jesus was betrayed, he was a coward. He's not now, because something has happened. Peter has had an experience... with the resurrected Christ. Oops, spelled it wrong. That's okay. And then he had the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're going to go into this at length over the course of the next couple of weeks when we get into the season of Pentecost. 
But these things touched and transformed Peter's life. He had an encounter with the resurrected Christ. He was gifted with the Holy Spirit. These two things turned this cowardly man into a man of great courage. Imagine what it can do for you. An encounter with the resurrected Christ. The gift of the Holy Spirit. So what does Peter do? Peter, filled with that spirit, stood up and said, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you, to all the people of Israel, that this man is standing before you, the man again who is crippled, in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of, of Nazareth. The reason why these lessons are chosen for the season of Easter is because they boil down the message of Christianity to a very simplistic form. I mentioned to you that there are some Christians who are so caught up in their systematic theologies. And they get very judgmental of people who don't agree with them about their interpretations of the Bible. Peter always has a way of simplifying the message to be this big. Well, it's this big in terms of how he says it. It's this big in terms of impact. What we do is we get fixated on all these details and minutiae. And we argue and we bicker and we gripe. And we condemn other Christians because they don't agree with us about this perspective or that perspective. And Jesus is therefore grieved. Because this is simply the message. You want to know how the world was transformed back in the day of the disciples when they became the apostles, the witnesses? Because they preached a simple message. Here's the message. This is what Peter said. Healing I put the word saved there for reason because that's the same word, sozo, that, that word healing or salvation. Okay? Healing or saved there actually is uh, another word for healing, but oftentimes when we're talking about salvation in the Bible and healing and so forth, you know, oftentimes it's the same word meaning healing and salvation. So what does God want to do? God wants to heal us and save us. How does God do this? In the name of Jesus Christ. There you go. In Jesus Christ's name, we're healed. That's the good news. That is the totality of the good news. So if you've got Christians that are saying, you got to believe this, this, and this, and this, and this, before you can be saying, you got to pray in this such and such a way, you have to believe this about that, this is it. If there's anything outside of this that somebody's trying to pawn off of you in order for you to receive salvation, they're pawning off on you stuff that has nothing to do with salvation that we receive healing in the name of Jesus Christ. So how do you receive it? In the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed, you are saved. Now we're not talking just, now in this case, the story of the healing of the, the man who's paralyzed, he's, he's going to die. So the apostles aren't fixated on materialistic healing and blessing. There are a lot of Christians who get so fixated on this. The name it, claim it crowd, okay? Health, wealth, and prosperity doctrine people. They're so fixated on materialistic blessings, all of which are going to be gone at some point. God is not, God is transcendent. God has a bigger plan for us. This, when we think in terms of our relationship with God, with that which is transcendent, that which created the universe, okay, this is what the message is that we can have a relationship with the Almighty God in the name of Jesus Christ. That sets us free. Whether you are poor and living in Calcutta, or whether you're wealthy living in the United States, 
It's not about materialistic blessings. It's about God setting us free from those things that bind us. So that we might have relationship with God. Let me finish our lesson for today. Just one more verse. This Jesus, Peter goes on to say, is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has now become the cornerstone. Now, we don't understand this imagery. I mean, we do. We get a gist of it because, but most of us don't build with stones. We're not stonemasons. Uh, we don't understand this type of imagery. It was a little more uh, understandable to them in their day, especially as they're watching the temple go up and so forth. It was still being built at the time that Peter was in front of the temple. <coughs> um, so they understood stone masonry, and they got, <coughs> pardon me, the imagery a little bit better. But I mean, I think, I think we can get the, the gist of the idea that there's a, a stone at the corner of the building around which the building is built and structured. And it, it's, it's the very first stone that is laid. And so where that's laid sets the tone and the tenor of the building and, and the structure is built around that stone. So we get it. I don't think we have to understand any more than that. That's who Jesus is. So God wants to do something big, something magnificent, build something beautiful. And the key to that is Jesus Christ. Okay? So today, in this world are about one billion people who claim to be Christians. What flabbergasts me is that one billion people don't have the same impact as 11 disciples did 2,000 years ago. Why? Why? I think it's because we've become so lost and our traditions, and our systematic theologies, and believing that everybody has to believe all this minutia and detail and, and all these things that we think are so important, disciples realized that the only message that's important is that you can have healing, salvation, in the name of Jesus Christ. And that, my friends, is the good news simplify your message. We can truly turn this world upside down with this simple thing. Have an encounter with the resurrected Christ. Be healed in his name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the healing that has been done for us in Jesus Christ. That we can be set free of those things that put us into bondage and we do look forward to a deeper, more intimate relationship with you. And we pray that you would continue to help us to grow in that relationship. Let us let go of all of those traditions and all of those things that weigh us down and keep us from being effective. I think the early church was just so amazing because they were so energetic. They weren't concerned about structures and traditions. They weren't concerned about keeping their buildings open. They were just concerned about proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ, and amazing things happen. So I'm praying that you'd help us to put behind us our concerns about our buildings and our pastors and our, our salaries that we got to pay and, and the programs that we got to run. And let us be fixated on the simplicity of the message, the good news, that in the name of Jesus Christ, you can have healing Let that message resonate with this world, God, because we need your healing today. Let the church truly be the church so that this world might be healed and touched and transformed. For he asks this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God's blessing be upon you this day and send you forth in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, we want to thank you for joining us. We will not be in person, uh, obviously, this Tuesday or the next two Tuesdays. 
So we encourage you. We're grateful you're watching us here. We will continue to provide a Tuesday Bible study for you online on this YouTube channel over the course of these next two weeks. But we will resume our in-person Tuesday Bible studies on May, I think it's the 18th. We still do have in-person worship every Sunday, so you're welcome to come down for that on, on Sundays. Blessings to you. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.